Shadow is back. Yes! He came back when we thought he was gone from our lives after the events of Adventure 2. But with the power of the fans and their demand, he returned in... Jumping into this game, you'll of course know you need to beat this game four times with each of the teams. Team Sonic being the middle of the road, Team Rose being the easiest, Team Chaotix asking you to do random missions, and then Team Dark being the hard route of the game. I didn't really mind it having a hard option as a difficulty, but I'd say it would have been fine if you had the option to just have a difficulty setting for the game instead of rather asking players to just, oh yeah, just play this as the hard mode. Because even when you finish the game, when you complete at 100%, the reward is a hard mode. What? Luttles, if you of course notice in Team Dark's routes, you can expect them to have stronger enemies and the levels to last a much longer than a lot of their routes. Going through it again, I didn't have, like, have much problems. But I do recognize which were definitely the hard parts to go through, because Bingo Highway was, of course, one of them just because of the whole pinball controls <laughs> in it. And then Mystic Mansion and Final Fortress. Mystic Mansion, I only had a problem because they introduced a, the, one of the strongest enemies in the game, which is the Heavy Egg Hammer, which is just a much upgraded version of the Egg Hammer. It, this time around, it just has a hit a weak spot which can only be knocked off once you take it off the helmet and it's knocked over it's not as bad as fighting it one but the game throws multiple versions of it after a few levels because the enemy wave boss which is similar to robot carnival uh, after you finish bingo highway when you do finish cryptic castle you have to do this one called robot storm which gives you even more stronger enemies and at the end you have to fight three of these guys i recommend just utilizing team blast just to finish that boss in the best way possible and of the uh, level design shadow once again does of course share some similarities with sonic which is of course obvious because he does represent the speed class as well as sonic however the other two speed types did get different gimmicks with Amy getting the ability to do a, a bit of a flyer jump and th uh, throw the tornado as a bit of a projectile when she does her spin move, and Espio get being able to throw ninja stars and turning invisible for his end as well. Those gimmicks aside though, I still felt it was Team Dark was the most memorable playstyle for me when going through it, because mainly because of these two factors. The first being Omega, which is also his debut game. He can be just very destructive once you level him up after a while because you see him just get different ways of firing weapons because they'll just start from bullets go to a flamethrower and then end it off with the straight up grenade launcher as well as his dialogue is also fun to hear as well the other factor being the team blast which is the, the game's ultimate move for your team which allows you to utilize chaos control to destroy an entire area as well as it's also the first time you're able to use chaos control outside of the versus mode in adventure 2. story wise shadow makes quite a turn for his new story path when we last saw him we saw him fall down all the way down to earth here rouge finds him again after finding eggman's secret treasure the one piece it also finds Omega here as well, who is also the last of the E series, and a homage to Gamma, who could not return due to the events of SA1. And then the trio becomes the best team up since the entire trio all have their own different goals. Omega wanting revenge after he was decommissioned by Eggman, and Rouge after more treasure, and Shadow of course trying to learn more about his past and who he really is. I, would, I really love how they incorporated and encapsulated these motives through this machine, which is the team's main theme. A shadow of myself just to am I Pushing the fight in electric lives Change surroundings A true in history the treasure disappears as she goes Missile as you look away Shadow 
also gets a small introduction to Team Chaotix. Wait, what? Once you beat the Egg Albatross, it gets a bit complex. As you're probably aware, every team that faced off a fake Eggman during that fight with Metal copying their data. However, Team Dark comes across something very interesting. A destroyed android of Shadow, which further questions who Shadow really is in this moment, with Rouge showing a bit more care for Shadow as she realizes he is unsure of who he truly is. Both their, their dynamics grew a bit in this game as the last time they interacted in SA2 was right before Final Chase where Shadow was ignoring the truth about Project Shadow as Rouge was unsure of who Shadow truly was. And while she has ulterior motives, she does at least show that she does care for Shadow and Omega as we go on. Into the next rivalry fight, we see Sonic and Shadow finally seeing each other after the events of SA2, with Shadow barely able to remember anything about them, and just noticing that Sonic it might be his twin. And however, because of Rouge and Omega don't want anyone else getting in the way, it ends up being a very quick fight. Oh, maybe, maybe this is a good time to- oh, okay, never mind, we're not gonna talk about their memory. <laughs> Not having any memory or knowing who he truly is, he still believes he is Shadow the Hedgehog. After the Egg Emperor, Rouge discovers this other treasure that Eggman has, and it turns out he's working on even more android versions of Shadow. But the next set of dialogue that Rouge and Omega have, I'd say it's a bit more confusing because R Rouge says that Shadow is a robot. Hey Omega, did I ever tell you that Shadow is a robot and- WHAT?! YOU THINK I'M A ROBOT?! Just to be completely clear, Shadow is not entirely a robot. He was created in the same way I'd say Mewtwo was created, where he is completely created through organic material. I'll probably dive into this more, but I want to clear it up now just because they, it sounded a bit confusing when I was going through this game again, how they were trying to interpret Shadow was a robot for, throughout this playthrough, when he really wasn't. Especially because uh, uh, Omega's last dialogue here is, the original must exist somewhere. Yes, he was with you right through the beginning. <laughs> of course, Shadow's last dialogue it, and his route is him saying that, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, she, he knows how Rouge is acting. Ignore talking about the final story, mainly because, of course, Shadow doesn't play a prominent role in it, as you mainly just play him just to keep uh, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles occupied to have enough time to transform into Super Sonic, and not much else. He doesn't have a big role compared to last time. Well, this game introduces Shadow with a lost identity. I love it for giving us a team that would stick together, ignoring free riders, for the next few years. While the other teams did change, such as Team Rose and Vector's team, they still managed to be together for a couple of games. I hope th this game in particular does be given a proper remake so people are, are given a proper experience to Team Dark's introduction. Going through this part I'd say was a bit more fun. But for the next part, oh boy, <laughs> I am not prepared for what's to come with this next one.